Please stand. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first readings of our Good Friday Liturgy. Prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted, even as many were amazed at him. So marred was his look beyond human semblance, and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who shall believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and his stripes we were healed. We had gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to, led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away, and who would have thought him thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned to him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, 
He shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my, for all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughingstock to my neighbors, and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am, I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted. All you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tes tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from the death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him 
and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They, ans they answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I had not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into his scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guard seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Anas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better than one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, <clears throat> If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there, keeping warm, and he said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning. And they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came, to, came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he was not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled. 
that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back to the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back to the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered, You wouldn't have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called the stone pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, <clears throat> Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to the place, to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, 
woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in, soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. If you are able to at this time, um, please kneel just for a few moments. Please stand. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken so that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the, leg of the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and imme immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness had testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. He took the body of Jesus and bound it with the burial cloth along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Today we're gathered here uh, for Good Friday. We know that Good Friday is the day that uh, Jesus dies on the cross. This is the day of the crucifixion. And this is the only day in the whole year where we have no Mass. So this is not a Mass. This is a service or a liturgy. We hear the gospel again, um, if, you, if you attended Sunday Mass last week or online, uh, we hear the passion, this, this long gospel about the passion of Jesus. And we hear it once again today, um, very appropriately, because today is the day that Jesus passes away, is killed, dies on the cross. And we give this great significance to the cross. Even right here in front of the altar, we see the cross. But, and I said this last week, um, if, if you were at one of my masses. But the cross, when we see the cross, everybody thinks of Jesus. 
Even people who don't believe in the faith or don't believe that Jesus was God, they think of Jesus Christ. That's how powerful this symbol is. And I remember um, this one retreat I was helping out at as a seminarian. One of the retreatants asked the priest there, um, what was, I think it was, I think the person asked the priest, what was the most memorable thing that you learned in the seminary? And this priest said to the group that was there, uh, answering this retreatant's questions, he said that the cross is the ultimate symbol of love. That there is no greater symbol of love in this whole world than the cross. And that's very true if we think about it. The cross doesn't just signify Jesus, but the cross tells us what Jesus did. It tells a story. And we hear that story in today's gospel. And the thing is, the cross is a, what it is in itself is a execution device. It's a torture machine. It was designed so that you would suffer on the cross when they put you on the cross. And then eventually you couldn't breathe so that you would die. It was designed very intel intelligently, but very hor horrendously. And so if you think about that, that's what the cross was. Imagine on people's walls, people have crosses now, or crucif crucifixes. Imagine people had a little electric chair on their wall or a guillotine that chops off heads. And when we think of those things, we think, of, oh, that's very gruesome. I would never do that. And that's what the cross is. It's one of those. It's, it's, a, it's a tool to execute criminals, to kill criminals. But Jesus' love was so great, he somehow turned that evil, horrendous, horrific thing into the ultimate symbol of love. That's what Jesus did. That's how great his love was. And now this, this thing that was supposed to be a symbol of, of killing criminals, of executing criminals, is now the most recognized symbol in the world of love. And the thing is, Jesus, that's how greatly he loves us. That's how powerful Christ's love is for us. All of us in here are sinners. I'm a sinner, you are a sinner. And every time we sin, what sin is, is us turning away from God. Whatever sin we commit, it's not just bad because it's bad. Sin is bad because it turns us away from God. And even if we commit a sin without knowing it, it's not as bad as if we know that it's a sin, but it's still us turning away from God even without knowing it. And so sin is something that we do that turns us away from God that we do every day, all of us in here. A lot of us, a lot of times, all, all of us commit sins, but many times we don't even know we're committing sins, myself included. Sometimes we have the sin of laziness, of pride, of lust, of greed, of envy, and we don't even know that we're doing it. But when we do these things, it turns us away from, from God. But of course, we know that God always wants us back, and we can always correct our mistakes and turn back towards Jesus. But all of us are sinners. We don't deserve the cross. We don't deserve Jesus dying on the cross for us. We don't deserve any of that. Jesus could have said, all of these people, even the people in our gospel story today that were actually there, that were crucifying and yelling at Jesus. Jesus didn't have to die for them. They did not love Jesus. They hated him. But his love was so great that the words he said on the cross were to God the Father were, forgive them for they, don't, for they do not know what they are doing. And even though we don't deserve this, Jesus loves us so much as well that he chose to do this. He chose to go through all of this, to die on the cross, to suffer, be tortured, be ridiculed, humiliated, all because he loved us that much. He loved us so greatly that this symbol of, this horrific symbol of, of murder became the greatest symbol of love. That love that he loves all of us individually here and in the world with. And so today, that's what we remember on Good Friday. It's a very solemn, very, um, very, um, a day of repentance a day of, very, of, being, of somberness because today is the day Jesus passes away, that he is killed, that he dies. But also we take consolation in knowing that Jesus died for us 
because he loved us so much. Jesus died for me because he loved me that much. Jesus died for you because he loved you that much. And that power of love, of Christ's love, is what we remember today. And so today, as we continue on with um, our liturgy and our and the rest of the day, um, and, and hold the, the Holy Tritium, let us really remember the cross, that the cross is a symbol of love, of Christ's infinite love for all of us, for all of you, for me individually. Please stand. We will now begin what we um, call the solemn intercessions. And they're just like the intercessions on a regular mass, um, but, um, but in a very special way, um, there are certain intentions that we pray for every year on this day um, of our Lord's death. So for each, um, I will be reading the first part of the prayer, and then we will pause in silence um, you, could, you could bow your heads too and then I will finish the prayer for that intention and we'll go through them like that let us pray dearly beloved for the holy church of God that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet we may glorify God the Father Almighty Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy that your church spread throughout all the world. May perseverance with steadfast faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord who chose him for the order of bishops may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by the reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our Bishop Jose Gomez, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. O 
almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as, as they live the truth and gather them together to keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, and the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God that following what is right and in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you, and by finding you come to rest, grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witnesses and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hands lie every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurances of peace, and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, grant to travelers safety, to the pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort our mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who have died. Almighty, ever-living God, only support of our human weakness, 
Look with compassion upon the sorrowful condition of your children who suffer because of this pandemic. Relieve the pain of the sick. Give strength to those who care for them. Welcome into your peace those who have died. And throughout the, this time of tribulation, grant that we may find all comfort in your merciful love through Christ our Lord. We will now begin um, what is um, known as the Adoration of the Cross. Um, it will be done a little bit differently um, than before or what you might be used to. Um, so instead of processing as, as I would in, um, if it was not in the pandemic, I'm just going to be up here um, and I'm going to three times seeing the verse. Um, so for, it's the same thing, but the response is just, um, come let us adore, it will be on the screens. Um, how it goes is, come let us adore. Um, if you're uncomfortable with seeing it, you can also recite it as well. And since we will, not, we will not be coming up to venerate the cross as usual, um, I'm going to sing this once three times, facing three different directions. Um, when it faces your way, um, you may bow um, as, a, as your sign of your veneration um, to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the word of the cross. From which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the word of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the word of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us Now we will be entering into the time for Holy Communion. Um, of course, as I said before, this is not a Mass, so it will be a little bit different. Um, the Holy Communion will still be distributed at the end of Mass. Um, but also there's a tradition in our church where the, um, on Good Friday, um, the collection of every parish um, in the world is for the Holy Land, um, for the churches over there. Um, so we will now be taking up uh, that collection if you are, feel called to do so. Um, just as on a regular Sunday, there are baskets placed um, on the sides of these doors or, in the, I think, in, yes, in the back of the middle aisle. Um, thank you.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Those who trespass against us, will deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of Receiving our body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not permit the judgment and condemnation. Dear loving mercy be for me, protection of mine, body and healing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Honestly, the word. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessings, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 